Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails. Uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out, free to sign up. Check it out. I'm out of here. Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Uh, another segment of Morning Motivation uh, coming to you from the Visionetics Institute. Uh, look, first and foremost, as I always say, I hope that you have had a great start to your week. I hope that last week was, was a promising week and that you achieved uh, the goals that you set out to achieve. But this is what I want to do. I want to take a bit of time to remind you that no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, that if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. And that's what you have to remember that sometimes you are not going to be where you want to be sometimes things are not going to unfold at the rate uh and the timing that you have set for it that doesn't mean that you failed it means that you're in the midst of process the process doesn't always respond to your demands in the time that you meet your job is to continue to fight your job is to continue to push your job is to remain focused and committed. Your job is to finish. That's it. This isn't about who's the smartest. This isn't about who has the best access and resources. This isn't about who knows who. All of those things matter when you're putting together a strategy. They matter when you're putting together a plan. They matter when you're setting your goals. Those things matter. But at the end of the day, you will win for one thing on your mentality to finish. It's not any of those things. It's simply what's the distance you're willing to, how bad do you want it? What's the distance you're willing to go to make it happen? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to go through? How hard are you willing to press? It's that simple. Before I, before I get off into this, because I, I really want to talk about this and I want to be brief. I want these segments uh, to be sort of concise so people can watch the entire thing. Look, um, for those of you who know there's something special in your life that you want to do, but you can't seem to take that step, you have mastered the art of procrastination. I encourage you to work with me to uh, enroll in the uh, Breaking the Curse of Procrastination uh, Masterclass. Also, um, for those of you who are looking for a more self um self-guided way i encourage you look in there there's a link to my 20th book critical mass i'm work. i'm right now working on hello everybody right now i'm working on book number 25 i'm writing it as we uh speak well not right now as we speak but i'm in the process of writing it now and it should be actually finished and published by the end of the year but uh book number 20 critical mass the phenomenon of next level living it's mapped out step by step in that book. It's a process. You got to be committed to reading. But that's the thing. There's nothing in this life that you want that's just going to come because you want it. Uh, that's a fable. Uh, that's misguiding. That's misinformation. That is what gets so many people caught up is they think because they want it, they can have it. And we live in a society of people who are entitled. Our children, our generation, this this generation under 30, under, under 30, that actually believes they are owed something without putting in some work just because they're here. It, it, it is a sad and, and scary thing. My thing is I try to get across to all my clients is you don't get what you want. You get who you are. You get what you've become. 
you get what you're capable of. So then what you do is you determine the things you want and then you make a real true and accurate assessment of where you're at. And then you say, OK, well, then I need to improve on this because the type of person that can have the things that I want is capable of doing X, Y and Z. I can do Z, but X and Y, I'm not there yet. So then what do I need to do? I need to actually become that person. I need to find a person who's done it and then determine what skill sets they have. I need to determine what mentality they have. I need to find out what their habits are. How early do they wake up? How many books do they read? How committed are they? Are? What do they sacrifice in order to have the time and the energy and the effort to do the things that they that, that, that they need to do to do what it is they want to have the things they desire? And then I must sit up and look at myself and be honest with myself and say, am I doing that? It's about mentality. It's about what I am willing to do to get what I want within the confines of morality and ethics, but also being willing to go the distance, being willing to finish. It's the distance you are willing to go. So then it's got to be an understanding of your why. Why am I doing? See, if your why isn't big enough, you're going to back down. If your why isn't big enough, when the pain hits, you're going to quit. When the discomfort hits, you're going to quit. When you, when you experience setbacks, you're going to quit. When you go through that period of delay, oh, and that period of delay is definitely coming. You're going to quit. Why? Because everything is about... Uh, 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 a microwave idea, a microwave society, you do it and you say it and it's supposed to happen. When it doesn't happen, then it must not be meant for me. No, if even if it's meant for you, that whole saying, ha this, this, this little saying that everybody likes to say has got a lot of people screwed up and messed up and missing out and losing. When it says what's for me is for me. Yes, what's for you is for you if you put in the work. What's for you is for you if you remain committed. What's for you is for you if you don't get shaken by delay. What's for you is for you if you determine in your mindset that no matter what happens, I'm going to walk this thing out no matter what happens. I refuse to quit no matter what happens. I'm going to ride and push until I get to the end. This isn't about ease. This process isn't about, if you're looking for ease, then settle into your media, mediocre existence. If you're looking for ease, settle into your, your average lifestyle. If you're looking for ease, just keep doing what everybody else is doing and you will get a lot more comfort, but you won't get the reward of excelling and living life at the level of your design. See, that comes with a, a, a persistence, a resilience, a, a, a relentlessness that refuses to give in. See, a lot of people want things, but they're not willing to walk it out. See, I'm telling you that I've experienced some things, but I had to walk it out. I had to go through some difficulties, some delays, some disappointments, some frustrations, some setbacks, being knocked flat on my back. But as one of the people that I admire a great deal, because I know what he went through to get where he at, he isn't somebody that was handed anything. He had to go for it. So I respect his, his, his what he says and I follow him. He, you know, I call him my uh, distant mentors, those people that I admire, that I spend a lot of time researching to learn how they got where they got. And one of them is Les Brown. And Les Brown has a saying that says, if you get knocked down, make sure that you land on your back. And see, one of the things we don't want, we don't want to get, we don't want to be flat on our back. He said, if you land on your back, that's a good thing. Why? Because you can look up. And if you can look up, you can get up. So the idea is having a mindset and a mentality. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about this morning. Real briefly, not going to be too much longer. Look, I am a lover of big cats. I'm a lover of animals, period. But I love big cats, lions, uh, tigers and and, and 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 things of that panthers and things of that nature i love i study them and i look at them and they amaze me uh and and i guess being a leo really gives me a gravitation towards lions i really love lions probably more than anything else because of the family setup that they have the pride and how they operate and how they move but one thing used to always baffle me is when i was a kid you, and you got to understand, talking about avid reader, you have no idea. You're looking at a kid that read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica by the time he was 10. This is what I do. I do this. I still do this today. I read books upon books upon books, studies. Re, I'm researching. I'm doing my own studies, all different things. That's just me. I always want to know. There's never a time that I think I know enough. So I'm always striving to know more. But but so as a kid, I'm going like, OK, why? is the lion considered the king of the jungle? 
that just baffled me. I'm like, okay, the lion isn't the biggest animal in the jungle. You know, there are a bunch of animals bigger, starting with the elephant, starting with the giraffe, starting with the rhinoceros, uh, the hippopotamus, and all those are, are, are formidable in strength. They're, 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 they're probably stronger than the lion, all of the ones we've mentioned. And then I said, okay, they're not the fastest. You know, the cheetah is definitely faster than the lion, you know, and, and uh, that, you know, there are some very uh, smart and, and, and intellectual animals in the jungle that's probably smarter than the lion. Okay, so what makes the lion the king of the jungle? <laughs> Mentality. Mentality. Everything I just got through talking to you about before this moment was about mentality. It's not about who you know. It's not about your skill set. See, the mentality will get you in the right places to know the right people. The mentality will get you in a place where you learn the things you need to know. The mentality will push you to grab the things that make you the person. But if you don't have the mentality, you can have the perfect plan. I'm telling you right now, people balk when I say this, but I'm telling you right now, I would rather have a person with the right mentality and a poor plan than a person with an excellent plan and poor mentality every time. Psychology is 80% of your victory. If you don't master your mind, you are never going to be successful at the level that you can be because it requires a mentality that is relentless, that does not fold under pressure, that does not bend when, 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 or, or break when things become hectic. It's the mentality that says, I was built for this. If you ask anybody who's known me and seen me go through some of the things, everybody loves you. When you're on top, when everything's going, when, 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 you know, I look back at when I was at my height as far as money was concerned. And I, I couldn't get rid of people. And they love, but, but, but see, those aren't where you find your friends. And those aren't the people who really, uh, 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 who know you. They're there because of what they know about you. Not that they necessarily know you, but the people who know me, the few people I confided in, in those dark moments when things got rough and things weren't what they seemed on the outside. And I was really confiding. Those people know something about me because those people would look at me in the midst of what I was going through and they will sit up and say, you know what? I think you may need to get some help. You may need to get some counseling. And I say, why? I say, I think you're in denial. Why do you think I'm in denial? Because I know what you're going through. And every time I see you, you're smiling. Every time I see you, you're upbeat. Every time I see you, you are hyper optimistic. That can't be right with what you're going through. What you're going through should have you broken. What you're going through should have you shut down. What you're going through should have you. See, what you don't understand is you're looking at the situation. You're looking at my circumstances. You're looking at the outward reality that's momentary. And I don't operate right there. My mentality has me living in the future where I've already overcome it. My mentality has already told me I'm built for this. My mentality has already told me that I cannot be shaken by what's going on. My mentality has told me that if I just stand my ground, if I refuse to quit, that I cannot be stopped because the very definition of destiny means that it's destined to happen. It doesn't mean that obstacles won't appear. No weapon formed against me not prospering never said no weapon would be formed, that it wouldn't be an obstacle. You've got to understand the mentality has to be built around refusing to quit. See, there were a bunch of times that a bunch of people who were going would have been going through what I went through would have shut it down and backed up and went and found something more comfortable, something more easy. But I refused to give in. I refused to quit. And so they said, you, you, you can't be. I said, no. See, what happens is you're looking at the circumstances. But see, I have a spiritual connection to the most high. That, that spirit of the most high is com constantly in communication with my spirit. And it is bearing witness or testifying or speaking to my spirit constantly reminding me of who I am. So when I get into circumstances that are not favorable, my spirit simply disagrees with the circumstances. See, faith transcends 
Facts. Oh, I, I, I need you to understand, but there's a mentality. Back to the lion real quick. See, the elephant is bigger and stronger. But there are two mentalities, and the elephant ain't no punk. The elephant will stand up when backed up and cornered and, and defend its herd and definitely its young ferociously. But the mentality is still different. When a lion encounters an elephant who is bigger and stronger and very capable of killing it, its mentality is different. The elephant sees the lion and immediately the first thought is to run, is to get to safety. When the lion sees the elephant, the first thought is time to eat. That's the mentality. Not enough people have an eat mentality. Everybody's waiting on somebody to feed them. Everybody's waiting on somebody to hand them something, but nobody's talking about I'm about to eat. I, 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 in researching, I found out that they also what you know they don't really show this a lot in documentaries because it's hard to film in the dark. But lions hunt mostly in the dark and in the midst of storms. If they, if, 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 if the noisiest time. And the most tumultuous time is when they're hunting. The most tumultuous time in the darkness is when they're hunting. Why? They can't be seen as easily and the noise will uh, uh, mask their movement. Well, most people are afraid to move, lions move. When most people are being still and quiet because of the storm, they're intimidated by the storm. Lions are moving. Lions are hunting. Lions are eating at the most tumultuous times. They're rising to the occasion. Their mentality is absolutely nothing is going to stop me from eating. They wake up. They literally are up two or three hours a day. They're sleeping and resting the rest. Why? Because when they're up, they're hunting. They're eating. They are asserting themselves. If you ever sit up and watched, all the animals that go to a watering hole in the Serengeti are all nervous because they know the crocodiles are in the water. You watch the lions. Lions are just as vulnerable if they get pulled in the water, but watch them. When they see the crocodile pulling up, the male lions begin to growl and actually start walking into the water. They literally start walking toward them and the, you see the crocodiles backing up. Why? The mentality. Do you really want this smoke croc? Do you want it? Do you want to go for it? It's a mentality that nothing is going to back me down. Do they have some losses? Yeah, I've seen them run up into some 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 uh, wild oxen or a hippo and get banged up. A couple of them I've seen get killed, but it doesn't change the mentality. Oh, man, we got banged up. I think we need to change our approach. We need to be a little more docile. Maybe we need to hunt little bitty things. No, if I see it and it moves, I've seen them take down giraffes. Corner a giraffe in a in, 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 in a heavy bush, bush area where they can't move around, and they literally, the males, sit up and jump up from behind and grab them with their claws on the back hind legs, which is the strongest part of the giraffe, and they just slide down and they open up that flesh. And every time they do that, they're weakening the muscles. The giraffe is losing the ability to stand. And then once he hits the ground, it's a wrap. They go suffocate him and it's a wrap. They have a plan. They work the plan. Even when the plan blows up on them, they don't quit. They show up 
It's a mentality. It's a mentality. So my question to you is, what's your mentality? And for all of my believers who are checking in here, I got to take a sidebar with you for a second. I have a problem with anyone who claims to be a student of faith or a practitioner of faith. But every time I see you, you're whining about what's wrong. You're complaining about how life is going. Every time I see you, you're on social media posting your oh woe is me declarations out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. You're telling everybody what's really deep inside. You put on a facade of faith, but when it's time to actually carry out the, 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 the true nature of faith, huh? You're not delivering because it was a facade. See, true faith doesn't fold. True, true faith doesn't crack. The very nature of faith, I don't even have to see it to know that it's coming. That's faith. I tell people all the time, a bunch of what you are claiming you're operating in faith in isn't real faith. See, faith uh, as we understand it is what? the substance of the things that we hope for. It's really truly the substance. It's the, 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 the matter of the things. It's the elements and components of the things. It's the things before they manifest. And the evidence, oh, this part right here, the evidence of things not seen. See, the whole thing is if I can see it, if I can put it down on paper and I can calculate it and I can draw out a sketch, of how I'm going to get it done, that doesn't require faith. It only requires action. Now, a bunch of you aren't being active in that area. Oh, but faith comes when it gets beyond what I can see in my natural sight. I've got to call on something that's greater. The very same thing that allows my spirit to disagree with my circumstances is what fuels my faith. Ain't nothing bigger than my God. Now, again, I don't tell people how you how you relate to God. I, I stopped doing that a long time ago. I stopped trying to make people see things a certain way and start simply insisting you better have a higher power. You better have something you can tap in that you can trust. How you do that, I'm going to leave that up to you, but I'm going to tell you something. If what you're tapping into has you scared, you're not tapped into the right thing. If what you're tapping to has you frustrated, you're not tapping into. There ought to be something that anchors you no matter what you're going through. I tell you, I went through some things. There were some circumstances and some situations that just wasn't moving the way that I thought they were. But see, again, because I remain in direct relationship with the most high. See, it's not some distant person from me. See, God, the mind of God, which knows all things, is everywhere around me. It's flowing and coursing through me. The spirit itself is residing in me. I am a part of that divine nature. And when I operate in faith, I raise myself at a level of energy on a hurt scale that can actually be measured. When I start Folk fu functioning from a place of gratitude, I'm at about 500 hertz or higher. When I start functioning from a place of love, I'm at about 550. When I start functioning from a place of sought out and, 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 and achieved revelation, I'm at about 750. So that means that I'm literally in alignment at a high enough frequency where my spirit can be in direct alignment with the spirit of God. See, a lot of us can't relate and understand what it means to have a conversation with God, because first of all, we're looking for audible return and it doesn't happen audibly. It's a spiritual conversation and it can only take place at the level God resides. God would never lower his spiritual existence 
and spiritual state to come down to your level. Now, he will provide the capacity for you to raise yours, but you're going to have to come up there. You can't be down there at jealousy and envy and strife and anger and frustration. All of that stuff is about 200 hertz or lower. That literally can be measured when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're afraid. You're operating at 200 hertz or lower. It's a negative energy that you're emitting. And it has, and, 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 but if you, you look at uh, being grateful, that's why I start my day off every day. I got to find something I got to be grateful for. I got to be grateful. That's got to be some gratitude somewhere. But when I do it, what happens? I raise my level and then I'm able to hear from God. I'm able to speak with God. And that's the other thing. A lot of y'all's prayer life is kind of uh, uh, confusing to me. I, I, when, when I get clients, I ask them, I say, okay, you, you, you're a person of faith. So how is your relationship with God? And I'm like, we, I, okay, well, how is your prayer life? And well, it's like this. Okay, tell me, how does your, your average prayer go? And I say, just kind of bring it out to me. You don't have to tell me word for word, but tell me how it kind of goes. Well, I start like this and, and then I do this and then I tell him this. And then I and I, I said, well, let me ask you a real quick question. God is the one with all the answers, right? God is the one that's going to be able to grant or deny requests, right? So at what point in your prayer are you actually listening? That's one of the problems we have is we have messed up communication skills. The best thing you can do as a communicator is listen. So when I'm with God, 90% of my prayer is silence. Speak to my spirit. Settle my spirit. Reaffirm my faith. Speak to me. You're talking too much. You can't hear. Also, you got to understand what you're talking about is messing with your energy levels. If you're talking in a way of complaint, Lord, this happened at work. God, that happened at work. God, the light bill. God, this. Oh, wait a minute. You, first of all, you're acting like God doesn't already know. One of the beautiful things I ever discovered in my prayer life is that it wasn't anything that I was going to tell God that God didn't already know. So then I needed to be real uh, specific and calculated about what I wanted to talk about because I wasn't going to surprise God. I but, but what I could talk about is I could be open and honest about how I'm feeling about something. Knowing that God already knows, but more importantly, knowing God already has the answer. So then what happens is things that would normally be perceived as problems by others are considered challenges and puzzles by me. Why? Because they will be solved. Problems and issues are things that are beyond your control, but I got the spirit of God residing in me, the mind of God flowing through me and around me and at my disposal. That means there's no situation that the answer is not there. Matter of fact, the moment that you determine there's a situation, the answer is already on the way. The, the problem is, are you in a space to receive it? Can't receive it in a place of stress. Can't receive it in a place of fear. Can't receive it in a place of anger and envy and jealousy. You can't receive it there. That's some of the frustration is you so worried and angry somebody else has got what they want that you can't even open up and be where you need to be to have what you want. And your mentality is all screwed up. You got to go hunt. You got to go hunt. You got to sit up and wake up and say, I don't care about what the situation says. My spirit disagrees with the situation. I'm speaking out of faith. The things that I cannot see have been already guaranteed and declared, and I'm operating on that. You shall declare a thing, and it shall be established. That's what I'm talking about. And in case you're not, in case you're wondering, for those of you who are not based faith-based, that's scientifically validated. When you declarate or declare something, you establish it. Long before it manifests in your life, you've established it. And if you don't interrupt that manifestation with a different one, it's coming. But you can change the course of your life through your mentality. You got to get out of that victim mentality. Oh, woe is me. Oh, look at what happened to me. 
Hell, I done had a lot of things happen. I've had a lot of people do some crazy. I've got people that are doing things to me right now. But I'm not a victim because I refuse to lay down. I'm not a victim because I have a lying mentality. I'm hunting. I'm coming out. And unless you're doing something that puts you in direct my in my direct path to where I'm going, you're non-existent. But if you get in my way, I will move over you to get where I'm going. You either roll it with me or you get rolled over or you get out of the way. What you're saying about me in the periphery doesn't bother me. My grandmother taught me a long time ago, stop worrying about what people are saying about you. Stop worrying about what people think about you. Let the life that you live speak for you. You got to take on a mentality that doesn't fold to the opinions of other people. You got to take on a mentality that doesn't fold in the presence of adversity and opposition. You got to take on a mentality that sits up and understands that you were built for the battle. I'm made to win. I was designed by the creator to show up and perform. That wasn't any promises, though, that it would be easy. Matter of fact, the times that I've saw ease, it wasn't followed with great reward. So I learned that adversity is the fertile soil in which the seeds of faith are planted and cultivated. I learned that if I want to thrive and I want to reach higher heights, I'm going to have to go through a process of discomfort, inconvenience, and sometimes pain. I learned that if I was going to break through the glass ceiling of life, that I was going to get scarred and scraped and cut. But that was a part of it and that the reward would always outweigh the discomfort. How bad do you want it? What are you willing to give to have it? You can't take everything with you to the next level. Some of that stuff is too weighty. Some of it is too distracting. You got to let some things go. You got to let some people go. See, some of you can't move because you don't want to release what's old. Some of you can't move because you're still holding on to old stuff. Stop hoarding old stuff and start looking towards what's new. And for heaven's sake, to my Christian believers and people of faith, of all faiths, stop acting as if there's something greater than God, because that's what it happens. That's what happens when you start panicking in the midst of a situation is you're saying that I don't think God can or will fix it. When I think about that and I think about God and I think about stories, I'm always remembered. I'm going to say this, then I'll be done. I'm always reminded of the story of the Israelites having exited Egypt and they're in the wilderness and they, 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 they need to go over and take Canaan. Now this is the Canaan is the land flowing with milk and honey. This is the land that God had promised Abraham. And, 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 and now his descendants are sitting at the Jordan river and determining if they're going to go over and take it. And God says, you got to take it by force. And, and, and they're sitting up. So they sent over some spies and the spies go over. 12 spies go over. They all come back. 10 say we can't do it. Two, Joshua and Caleb says, yes, there are giants over there. But we can take it because God said we can. But the people were murmuring and listening and saying that they believed the tent. So God called Moses for a sidebar. And this conversation that God had with Moses sticks with me each and every day because it taught me something about God. 
God says, tell them I have heard their complaints against me. Now, if you go back and you go back and read, because I've done that over and over again, I go back and say, let me go find where this complaint is. They never actually complain against God. They complain about Moses, but they never complain. But when they sit up and say they can't, when God has already told them they can, God considered it a complaint against him. It was an impu impugnation of his character. They were impugning his character. They were saying that he wasn't going to follow them through on what he already promised. He said, that's a complaint against me. So you, this is what you tell them now. Tell them as they have spoken in my hearing, so shall I do to them. As they have spoken in my, you better watch what you're speaking in your life. That self talk about what you're going through and what's going to happen. God's listening. What they have spoken in my hearing, so shall I do to them. Now, no matter how you view that from a faith, from a biblical perspective, from a social perspective, from a psychological perspective, what you are speaking is in direct declaration of what you're manifesting. Stop talking about what you don't want. Start talking about what you do want. Start talking about what you are doing and going to do to change your situation. Stop focusing on what you don't want, because what you focus on, you feel. That's why things are so intense because you're focused on that negative situation instead of focusing on the solution. I'm going to leave on that note. Like I said, for those of you who really want to do something spectacular in, in, in your life and you're looking to go to the next step, but you've been just sitting there procrastinating, click that link and enroll in that procrastination course. Um, for those of you who like to do things at your own pace and kind of really don't want to work with anybody, or maybe you're not at a place financially where you can do it, order that book. That's going to be the best $30 you've ever invested, I promise you. Uh, I've gotten nothing but positive reviews back from that book. Uh, I mean, the crazy thing is I've gotten clients after people read the book. And one of the most humbling experiences I've sit up and experienced is having a client quoting my book back to me during a session and, and explaining how they got from A to Z to even to a point of working with me is they took steps based on that book. And so I'm going to encourage you to do that. Finally, I'm going to get out of here. And like I always say, I live my life on full. Every day I give it everything I have just like I do in this video. That's me all day engaged because I don't get to take the 84,000, uh, I mean the 86,400 seconds that I get every day. I don't get to take it to the next day. I either use it or I lose it. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to take untapped potential to the grave with me. I want to die on E. I want to die having giving life everything that I possibly can. That's my challenge to you. Live your life on full. So when you leave this place, you die on E. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. And I'll be checking back in with you later.